Welcome back, Eric here with LED Grow Lights Depot. We're gonna be looking at the new Tomahawk 650 Bar Light by HLG. From the company that patented Quantum Boards, this is HLG's first bar light. You might be thinking that HLG is a little late to the game with a bar light and wondering why they decided to go with this unique design. But ultimately, you want to know if this light delivers. I'll address these points along with a full review and some par readings. I'll even compare this light to HLG's flagship light, the Scorpion Diablo. All of this coming up now. Before I get into the meat of the review, I want to say that HLG also makes a Tomahawk 720. I won't be covering the fixture here, but just know that the 720 has exactly the same build as the 650 and uses a more powerful driver. It draws about 10% more power, puts out 10% more heat, and 6% more light. Okay, now let's peel back the layers of the Tomahawk 650. This fixture comes folded in half in a discrete brown box. Also included is a meanwhile power supply. RJ box with a dimmer, 120 volt to 240 volt adapter, wire hangers, ratchet hangers, and some hardware for securing the fixture and power supply. Before you hang up the light, you need to unfold the fixture and secure it from closing up on itself with two screws. If attaching the power supply to the fixture, you can do that at this time using the four longer screws. Otherwise, you can mount the power supply remotely with the optional driver extension cable. The frame is quite light. HLG built this as minimal as possible. It seems that they use as much aluminum as necessary to hold the fixture together, provide some stability, and properly heat sink the diodes. I know the fine folks over at HLG would not build a fixture that did not have enough aluminum to properly draw the heat out of the diodes. So with some tests, they must have settled on this amount of aluminum backing the diodes. The heat sinks contain reflectors, which HLG has started adding to all of their medium size to larger size fixtures. These help direct about 10% more light down towards the canopy, opposed to the non-reflector design. The RJ control box can be mounted anywhere within the cord's reach. I chose to mount it on the frame. You can connect a 0 to 10 volt controller to this control box or instead choose to use a manual dimmer. This fixture contains full spectrum cool white diodes and 660 nanometer deep red diodes. There are not any UV or far red diodes in this fixture. I was asked by HLG to not say much more about the diodes since these are a new horticulture diode from a well established company and I don't think HLG wants to give away any secrets here. I was also told that Steve, one of the owners of HLG, helped develop this diode in partnership with that well-known company. Pretty cool. Sometimes growers get wary when they don't know the exact diode model in the fixture. This is a bit overrated in my opinion. What is more important is the PPF and PPE of the fixture as a whole, not just what the specs say on the diode data sheet. The photon flux and par efficacy of the entire system is what matters, the entire system being the diodes, driver, and all. Take AC Infinity's new Ion Frame series as an example. They are using the new Samsung LM301H Evo diode in this series, but this is not the only diode that they're using. So when you add all those other diodes in there, the fixture is probably producing less light and is less efficient than if only the Evo diodes were used. Plus AC Infinity does not even state the total light output or par efficacy of the fixtures, so how does the light perform as a whole? This is one reason why we can't only consider the diode specifications and need the proper data from an integrating sphere that measures total light output and par efficacy of the fixture. So that being said, what is the light output and par efficacy of the Tomahawk 650? Well, the fixture produces 1859 PPF at 2.8 PPE, which is pretty darn good. It's not HLG's best performing light, but it's definitely up there. HLG states that this light draws 650 watts, which is pretty close to what I got when I tested it with a kilowatt meter. The coverage area of this fixture is a strong 4x4 or up to a 5x5 depending on how much light you would like to bathe your plants in. If you're used to putting about 1700 micromoles per second of light in a 4x4, you'll want about 2600 PPF for a 5x5 to get the same amount of light per square foot. Therefore, you can see how this light trends more towards a 4x4 coverage area at only 1859 PPF, but the beginner to average home grower would still be able to use this light in a 5x5 tent to grow some nice plants. HLG has published two PAR maps for the Tomahawk 720, one at 12 inches and one at 18 inches. We can adjust these values down by about 6% to get the PPFD readings for the Tomahawk 650, since there is about a 6% difference in light output between the two lights. 6% is pretty small, so the readings that you see on the PAR maps for the 720 are just a bit higher than what the 650 would come in at. 
These readings appear to not have been taken in a grow tent based on the lower PPFD readings at the edges and corners, so take that into consideration when judging these PAR maps. Many growers using an LED grow light will be using it in a tent or in an application where there are several lights in a single area, and this would reduce hot spots and increase uniformity. Now here are my PAR readings in a 4x4 grow tent. Alright, first reading is at 36 inches, right around 900 in the middle. And I'm just going to move it back here. And I apologize for the wrinkly uh, mat here with the dirt in front. That's usually not how I like to roll. So I'm moving to this corner, about 700. And this other side, about 780. So really good uniformity at 36 inches. I wouldn't suggest flowering at this height. If you're going to flower um, with this light, definitely going to want to hang it closer. So 36 inches is kind of showing you what you'd be getting through the canopy. So at 18 inches into the canopy, uh, these are some of the readings that you'd be looking at. All right, next reading, 24 inches, about 1150 in the middle. Some pretty good intensity. Moving to the back, about 920 corners, just about 770 or so and this side looks like about 900 so 24 inches would be the height that I would recommend um, for flowering for most people you can see that you're gonna be able to move this a bit closer and uh, get some you know pretty good intensity while still maintaining uniformity so 24 inches and as you'll see shortly 18 inches would be my recommendations so 18 inches, all right, 1310 right in the middle. And then still holding that uniformity fairly well, still over a thousand on the edges, corners, about 850. And this other side, about 930. So just notice how that intensity changes as I move it around and also the uniformity. So again, 24 and 18 inches are good flowering heights for most people in a 4x4 grow area. Alright, just going to keep going here a bit. And back to the center. Alright, 12 inches. 1500 PPFD right in the middle. And just notice how that's changing as I move it to the back. About 1180. Corners about 800, so a lot less uniformity here than these farther heights, and about 960 on this side. So great intensity here, just low uniformity um, overall. So, and I apologize for the light moving here. I think I was bumping it when I was taking these readings, or at least bumping the tent, which was hitting the light. So again, that's usually not how I like to do it. A little sloppy here, but you get the main point. You uh, are able to see how the intensity changes throughout the tent and how that uniformity is also changing. All right. So does this light live up to its expectations? Yes, it certainly delivers. Top of the line components meets minimalist design meets HLG, a recipe for a great light. Its design is quite novel or different, which may be a turnoff for some growers, but you shouldn't let aesthetics get in the way of performance. The reflectors are such a great move and you don't see many companies use a reflector design to increase delivered light to the canopy, except perhaps Mars Hydro on their TS series. As LED grow lights have evolved, there have been a plethora of copycat companies building off of Fluence's bar light design. So HLG took their sweet time before entering the bar light market, wanting to make a bar light, well, HLG style, and entering when it was the right time for them. Some people say a few years too late, but quantum boards have worked for HLG since the beginning and are still working quite well for growers. Is this bar light a new direction for HLG or just a one-off to say that they have a bar light? Only time will tell. How does this light compare to the Scorpion Diablo V2? The Diablo V2 draws about 10% more watts, puts out 10% more light, is about 6% more efficient, but is 30% more expensive. Overall, the Diablo V2 is a better light, but may not be for growers looking to save some money and not deliver too much light to their 4x4 area. But the best bang for your buck between the two lights would be the Tomahawk 650. 
The 650 comes in at $899, so it's a little bit more expensive than many other bar lights on the market. Performance wise, this light rivals many of the other lights that I've tested in a 4x4 tent. The amount of light delivered to the canopy is awesome. Plus when you buy an HLG light, you're buying an excellent 5 year warranty. If anything happens to the light, HLG has some of the best customer service in the industry, so that peace of mind is worth the extra cost in my opinion. If this light is within your budget, I would say go for it. You won't be losing anything and you'll only be gaining extra light delivered to your canopy. So what do you think about the new Tomahawk series? Let me know in the comments below and use code HLG10OFF for 10% off this light or any other HLG item at ledgrowlightsdepot.com, link in description. So support our channel by liking this video and subscribing for more LED grow light related content. See you in the next video.